It's another edition of special edition from the Globe Life Studios at the Star in Frisco. The Cowboys are three and one and they are on the docket for a whole lot more as the New York Giants come to AT&T Stadium in week five. Alongside Isaiah Stanback, Barry Church, Nate Newton. I'm Kyle Yeomans as we continue to look back at the Carolina win and then look forward to the Giants and another NFC East divisional rivalry on the docket this week. But we start off by looking at the 36 28 win over the previously undefeated Carolina Panthers. Matt Rule and company coming to town and really punching the Cowboys in the mouth early on. But it was a response that was really impressive. So I start with you, Isaiah. Was this the most impressive win of Mike McCarthy's tenure? I was impressed, but I wouldn't say it's my most impressive. Uh, I think that those guys did a heck of a job handling the, the woes and the foes of, of Carolina. Uh, that's a tough team. And they, they were two different teams that showed up. First half team, second half team. But I do believe that the Chargers game and us taking them out, I think they are a stronger, uh, stronger, more complete team. And I think that victory over, overthrows this one. Yeah, I'm with you, Isaiah, on that one. I think the uh, Carolina Panthers game was an extremely solid win for this Cowboys organization. But looking back to that Chargers game and seeing who the Chargers have beat since that Cowboys game, I think that was a more impressive win. But overall, these are two great wins for this Cowboys organization. Hopefully they can keep that momentum rolling. I'm, I'm just saying, hey, that was the next game at the time. It was the most important game. You went into a 3-0 and team, a very disciplined team. I think this was your best win up to date. Bar yeah. the Chargers game. There you go. I mean, the Chargers might have been more of an impressive win from a team standpoint, but from a dominant standpoint, yeah. the yeah. Cowboys took a 3-0 and Panthers team three quarters to finally get the Panthers going a little bit and maybe took their foot off the gas. Now, a 3-1 and start is great, but there still is a little bit of drama in Cowboy land this week as – Pro Bowl linebacker Jalen Smith released by the organization and he is now not, no longer a Dallas Cowboy. Let's go out to Mike McCarthy and hear what he had to say about the release. I mean, there's a, uh, multiple factors obviously go, go, they go into these, these decisions and that, that's def, they, definitely the case with Jalen. Um, just a lot of things um, to go through, but you know, at the end of the day, uh, I had a chance to visit with him last night. Um, you know, very thankful for, you know, my time with him here. Obviously, you know, talked about, you know, his experience here in Dallas. And, um, you know, it, it, we just felt that this is the, was the, the best time to make, to make this decision. So it was a collective effort to let Jalen Smith loose of his contract and one that, of course, has infuriated Cowboys fans for quite some time. But he definitely meant a lot to this organization. What did you think about the move and was it surprising to you? Um, it was surprising, just simply, simply from the standpoint of timing. Um, I think he's one of the cornerstones. Obviously, Jerry Jones felt that way. He was last year's leading tackler. Um, but this year, he was only accounting for 50, 56 percent of the plays. So um, it's a move that they needed to make, and they they had you know they they had the guts and gusto to make it happen. Yeah, I believe the writing was on the wall with this one. I mean, his play was getting better from um, a play standpoint out there this year than last year. But when you got the young studs like Parsons, this coaching staff is high on Jabril Cox. I think that had a lot to do with forcing the hand of the Cowboys to go ahead and release Jalen Smith. And I think it came down to these two veterans, LVE and Jalen Smith. And I believe LVE outplayed him these first four games, and that let the Cowboys uh, let Jalen Smith go about his way. There's not much more I can add to that, Jalen. Hey, thank you, man. You're a great guy to the media. You, you never had your head down, and you, you believed in yourself and continue to believe in yourself. Really, the added depth is one of the factors that Mike McCarthy was talking about in the decision to release Jalen Smith. And some of that depth has been headlined by a defense that has taken away 10 turnovers from opposing def or offenses through the first four weeks of the year. They're second in that category. Five of those belong to Trayvon Diggs, the mm. NFC Defensive Player of the Week. Mm. After he was named Player of the Month a week prior, he had two interceptions on Sunday. How has he been this successful this early on, Barry? I mean, this guy is all all over the place. He's on these receivers running the routes for them. And it doesn't matter if it's zone coverage or man coverage. This guy is a ball magnet out there. The ball seems to just be attracted to him. And he's flourishing in Dan Quinn's system. And if he keeps this stellar play up throughout the season, we may be talking about defensive player of the year. Man, he's a big baller. Yeah. That's, that's all. Like He's a big baller. He's a ball hawk. I mean, my man Isaiah can tell you better than I can. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's, having a, he's having a great impact on his defense. Um, these guys want to play fast and physical. And in Dan Quinn's system, he wants somebody who can step up there and handle the, the best guy um, on the opposing team. And that's exactly what he's showing he's capable of doing. 
and they're going to try and continue the momentum defensively against the Giants offense that is led by former Cowboys head coach Jason Garrett coming up this week. It's also the one year anniversary of Dak Prescott's gruesome injury. Will he have that on his mind when facing the Giants in week five when we return to special edition? Special edition presented by AT&T is brought to you by Ford built for Texas built for you Geico 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance Salvation Army doing the most good and by AT&T This segment is brought to you by the Texas Lottery. Play the new Jim 7 scratch tickets. There's a Jim 7 scratch ticket for everyone, so play today. It's pretty fitting that when you look up the league leaders in terms of teams, points per game, the Dallas Cowboys sit with a magical number fourth right now and it's because number four Dak Prescott <laughs> is playing some of his best football at the moment over 30 points per game for this Cowboys offense and Dak Prescott 10 touchdowns that's the most in his career through the first four games of the season he has been lights out and really managing an offense that just needs him to manage it at the moment because everything's working for him at, uh, going into week five. Yeah, I mean, he's doing exactly what you want from your starting quarterback. He's not doing anything over the top. He's not having to force the ball down the field. Um, game manager or whatever you want to reference him as, he is being successful in his role as the leader of the Dallas Cowboys on the offensive side of the ball. Yeah, this right now, Dak Prescott is playing at all-time high right now. His command of this offense, he's cool, calm, and collected in the pocket. He's like an extension of the coaching staff right there. Him and Kellen Moore are basically synced as one out there. He's making the best out of all the opportunities, putting this offense in the best, best position to be productive. Right now, he's QB1, and he's on fire. And, you know, Barry, I want to just go, you know, extend that right there. You know, a quarterback's job is to put the offense in the best possible play. Mm -hmm. And he's doing that the majority of the time, man. I, they give him a play. He got the authority to change that play. And when he changes it, nine times out of ten, it's the better play for the offense. Dak Prescott, one of four quarterbacks with ten touchdowns and 75 percentage completion through the first four games mm. of the year. Tom Brady, Peyton Manning, Russell Wilson are the only other three guys who have ever achieved that. But is there a little revenge on the mind of Dak Prescott going into this ball game this week? I don't feel like there's revenge. I mean, nobody did anything to him. I do believe that he's seeking closure. Uh, whenever you sustain something that, that was so so uh, tra traumatic like he had just had, I feel as if he wants to make sure that that book is closed. But at the end of the day, his, his overarching goal for this game is to walk out with a W. Yeah, and he's throwing to Amari Cooper, dealing with the ribs injury previously and then into a hamstring. But Cooper's still been able to ball out. You look at this touchdown catch that he had against Carolina. It looked like nothing was wrong. But are you okay with Coop pushing the way that Coop has been pushing, Barry? Look, Coop is a warrior. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. He went out there with busted ribs was able to go out there and still give you three receptions, 69 yards, and a touchdown. Now, it makes me a little bit nervous out there when you're dealing with a hamstring because Isaiah, we all know, mm. when you're dealing with that hamstring, it can go at any minute. So I'm, I'm a little bit nervous about him going forward with that, but that's the type of guy you want in your foxhole. That's the type of guy you want to go to war with because between those lines, he's going to give you 100%. They say he's a chess master, man. He reads the book, The Art of War. And I hope just just a move <laughs> to make himself better. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> this guy, I've heard the whispers, man, coming out of training camp. What, what about Amari? Well, we see Amari's closing the gap, man. He's one of the best five uh, route runners in the league. What about the whispers that were surrounding Ezekiel Elliott heading into the year as well? Was he washed? Was he past the prime of his career? Maybe not so much as Zeke had over 140 yards for the first time since 2018. Nate, what have you seen from Zeke? And is he back to elite status in the NFL? Fine wine. Baby. <laughs> <laughs> it's getting better over time. Zeke is the man. Zeke does what needs to be done. He's faster. He's quicker. I mean, not long term speed, but he's quicker. He's a little bit more explosive than last year. He lost about 15, 20 pounds and he's showing. Look at him. He wants to eat, baby. He definitely wants to eat and he's still that driving force. He's still that sledgehammer that when the fourth quarter comes around defenses don't want any parts of him and that's what he brings to this to this offense and look I'm no genius or anything like that. I don't pretend to be that but the stat goes if he goes over 130 yards in a game the Cowboys are undefeated. So to me Nate that's that's a winning formula right, right there. Right. Yeah Zeke, Zeke is who he is man. He hasn't lost a step. I know last year there was a lot of things that he had to deal with in terms of offensive line um, in terms of him trying to force plays and resulting in fumbles. This guy is being efficient. He's running for four 
four and a half yards per carry. He is he's he, he's carrying out his blocks when they when we decide to pass. He is a guy that they have to circle whenever they draw these guys up and face him on the field. Yeah, he has continued to be one of the the leading backs in the NFL. Currently sits fourth in rushing yards and he's sixth in attempts. If that shows how efficient he's been on the ground. How about Saquon Barkley? Can the Cowboys defense slow down Saquon and keep him bottled up, much like he's been throughout 2021? This segment was brought to you by the Texas Lottery. This segment is brought to you by Ford. Built for Texas, built for you. It took until week four of the NFL season, but the New York football giants got into the win column. They once trailed in the fourth quarter 21 to 10 against the New Orleans Saints down in the uh, ruckus Superdome, but they stormed back thanks to their big playability on offense. We're about to talk about those New York Giants here on Special Edition. Isaiah Stanback, Barry Church, Nate Newton. I'm Kyle Yeomans. And gentlemen, this is a big playability offense that is led by a quarterback, Daniel Jones, that has been pretty much the definition of inconsistent throughout his time in New York. But an offense also led by Jason Garrett has an ability with a quarterback to make some plays. What have you seen differently from Daniel this year? Uh, his decision making. I think he's more confident within the system. Um, I think he learned from the film last year, the inconsistencies that you're referring to. He's he's doing away with those things. You can tell that he's watched the film and made those corrections. He's holding on to the ball and tucking it when he needs to, to just to extend the play and extend drives by moving these sticks. He is making smart decisions. Two, only two turnovers so far this year. Yeah, he has been playing better, uh, a lot than, a lot better than he had last year. We all know last year he was a walking turnover. Whether it's fumbling the ball or throwing an interception, he was a walking turnover. So he has been playing a little bit better. But until this uh, New York Giants football or the football team addresses that offensive line, I can't see him as a threat right there. So I think Dan Quinn and this front seven should be able to take advantage of him and this offense. You know, what he needed was confidence, man. In the second half of this last Saints game, man, he was throwing dimes. Yeah. I mean, he looked it good. He looked at, like you say, uh, Isaiah making decisions. Uh, we got we got to get on him. Mm -hmm. We got to get on him. Had a career high of 402 passing yards in that win over New Orleans, but he's also a threat on the ground. I mean, he has two rushing touchdowns. He's the team's leading rusher at the moment. We saw what Sam Darnold could do after that. What about Saquon Barkley, though? He's not the team's leading rusher because Daniel Jones has been that for the Giants. Is there a problem with Saquon? Is he still the weapon that you anticipate him to be? I watched the film on him on every game. They, they, he's uh, evidently been on the snap count. This, this dude is legit. He's a big Barry Sanders. Not as quick, he's not as fast, but this dude can do it. And I think they're going to try to unleash him this week. Yeah, they're definitely going to try to unleash him this week. And look, he, he's starting to look like that running back before he tore his ACL. All right, this guy is going to be a threat in this game. And especially with the absences of um, Sterling Shepard and uh, Darius Slayton out there, he's going to be the focal point of this offense. So the Dallas Cowboys, they've got to know where he is at all times or he can't end up burning them. Never fear your opponents, but always respect them. You need to be able to <laughs> you have to be able to identify who can hurt you on their team. And this guy right here, you know, big Nate dog stole my point. He looks just like Barry Sanders to me. Mm -hmm. um, the reason why you haven't seen these big splash plays is because his surrounding cast the blockers that, we, that Barry just referred to. But if you don't respect this dude, he will embarrass you and he will take over this game. You said to always respect your opponents. Do the Cowboys respect the Giants defense right now? Because there's some holes <laughs> on that defense. And of course, as well as the offense offense is playing they're trying to exploit it yeah there's a whole all kinds of holes and it really just comes down to us being efficient and us taking our game plan to the field um, I, these guys have a couple guys that can handle handle us um, you know if we allow for them to get going but overall we should be able to control this game on the ground and we need to be able to, uh, to keep the, keep our game on the ground so that we can extend these drives and keep their offense off the field Look, with, with the way our offense is playing right now and the command that Dak Prescott has over this offense I don't care if you put the 85 Bears out there. We are winning or we are going to run the football and we're going to um, uh, go down the field on the, with the football, whether it's spreading the ball out with our options on the outside or ground and pound with Zeke and Tony Pollard. I just don't think this uh, Giants defense has anything to control us. We should take advantage of them. Yeah, Zeke's on the docket for a potential another big game and maybe against this Giants defense, he can put up triple digits on the ground again. But will Zeke win the battle of the backs? Who out of the matchup between Ezekiel Elliott and Saquon Barkley? will have the better game when we return on Special Edition. This segment was brought to you by Ford. Built for Texas. Built for you.
This segment is brought to you by AT&T. Dallas has won their last four home games at AT&T Stadium against the New York Giants, and they look for their first four-and-one start to a season since 2016. The Cowboys, of course, went on to go 13-3. and three. That year, welcome back in to special edition Isaiah Stanback, Barry Church, Nate Newton. I'm Kyle Yeomans, and we've got our matchups of the game. Which matchups are going to be the most intriguing? Nate, we start with you, and no surprise here, you're going to the trenches. Oh, yeah, man. We got to look out for Dexter Lawrence, the second, and we got to look out for Leonard Williams. Those are two good defensive linemen. And then we got to worry about Jabril Peppers coming down into the box because they're going to try to stop that run game. They're going to try to stop it, and that's where it's going to be decided in the trenches. How much has this defensive line been improved uh, over the last couple of years? You're talking about the Giants? The Giants. They've tried to improve, but for some reason, they're falling off a little bit. They had two teams that rushed for over 150 yards, so they've been very inconsistent. Other teams under 70, two teams over 150, so we'll see if they can be consistent against Ezekiel. <laughs> <laughs> How about Ezekiel Elliott? That's one of your matchups, yeah. Isaiah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Freaky Zeke versus Saquon. Uh, I'm looking forward to this battle. I think that both, both teams are going to try to establish the run. Obviously, Zeke's been averaging four and a half yards per carry versus Saquon's been averaging three and a half yards per carry. And you heard Nate uh, mention earlier that they've had uh, Saquon on a snap count. I do believe they've had that. Uh, he's only had about 13 snaps per game on average. I think we can expect that to go up in this battle. Whoever wins the game on the ground, I think, has a big advantage in terms of winning this game. These are two of the top three backs in the league, and it's going to be intriguing to see which way that will end up rolling. Now, Barry, this is a fun one because yeah. <laughs> Dan Quinn versus Daniel Jones. It's the battle of the Dan's between the two. <laughs> Neither one of these guys have seen each other. Dan Quinn throughout his entire tenure at Atlanta never faced Daniel Jones at quarterback for the Giants, but how do you feel like this one's going to turn out? I think we can win this matchup 10 out of 10 times. I mean, we got the mad scientist Dan Quinn versus Danny Dimes right now, and the way that Dan Quinn has been able to disguise his defenses, the way he's been able to get their top quarterbacks into throwing interceptions and getting takeaways for this defense, it's at another level right now. And I don't think that the New York Giants or Danny Dimes is ready for what we're going to do defensively as the Dallas Cowboys. So the mad scientist, I think he's going to get ready. And I think we got Mike talk this team into maybe one or two interceptions this game. There have been eight straight games for this Dallas defense with multiple takeaways. That's the longest multi takeaway streak in the entire NFL. My question is to you guys, can that takeaway streak continue real fast? Yes, absolutely it can because these boys are playing lights out. They're flying around, they're hitting, and whenever you're doing that and you're playing disciplined football, turnovers happen. When you got digs, there's no question about it. We're getting a pick. <laughs> <laughs> Andy Gregory going to light things up. Promise you. Getting the pressure after that yeah. offensive line. For the Giants, that's been a little spotty at times. When we come back, who does Barry Church think is the <laughs> key to the Cowboys win this week and a key to a 4 and one start? This segment was brought to you by AT&T. Special edition presented by AT&T was brought to you by Ford. Built for Texas, built for you. Miller Lite, the only beer of the Dallas Cowboys. AT&T. And by NFL Game Pass. You'll never miss a game again. Enjoy full and condensed game replays from week one to the Super Bowl. Subscribe at DallasCowboys.com slash Game Pass. Wrapping things up here on Special Edition, week five of the NFL season. The Dallas Cowboys preparing to take on the New York Giants this Sunday afternoon at AT&T Stadium in Arlington. Isaiah Perry, Nate, we've got some keys to the game on the horizon. We'll start with you, Nate Newton. Who is the key to the game this week for the Cowboys to get a win? The whole defensive line because they're going to try to read options. They're, they don't have a good offensive line, the Giants. So they're going to try that read option. They're going to try to give you uh, the Saquon, or they're going to try to give you Danny Dimes. So those are the two guys you have to stop because the offensive line is not that good. So everything's going to be outside the tackles. And that's what we have to do. Our offensive line has to come in waves. Then our linebackers have to come in waves. <laughs> yeah, that's how we got to do it. Uh, for me, look, I said it last week, and it worked. We got the W, so I'm going to go ahead and say it again. Defense, we have got to take the football away. No matter if it's interception, force and fumbles, whatever we got to do, take the ball away. We have yet to go through a game this season without taking the ball away. It's a winning formula. Dan Quinn and his defense, let's keep it up. 
And, and we have to get ahead and we have to be relentless. We cannot allow these games to be close. Uh, bury these guys. Don't allow these guys to come back like they did against the Saints. 325 kickoff. It's the Giants and the Cowboys this weekend and Arlington. For everybody here and our entire crew, I'm Kyle Yeoman saying so long for Special Edition.